hot breath. There were nine la psychological laughter triggers. Okay. Nine stimuli that the brain respond to um, that triggers laughter. Okay. Surprise, embarrassment, superiority, release, configurational incongruity, recognition, ambivalence, and, uh, and coincidence. Uh, did I get all those? That's about nine. Uh, sometimes I forget, right? So then there are 13 major comedy structures. And so uh, the structures pull the triggers. Okay. So, and not every joke just has one. Some have multiple. One, some have ones where you're like, oh, well, that's kind of this and this. You know, this is compare and contrast and uh, this. Yeah, it can be both. Just like you'll have literary uh, scholars arguing over whether something really fulfills the obligation of meeting complete irony, you know? Same thing, you know? If you, uh, you don't have to, it's art. So, and also you have to remember as Picasso said, you got to know the rules before you can break the Boom. rules. Boom. You know, it's an art. Yes. So don't get all wrapped up and it's got to be this way, you know. Yes. But a lot of times you can tweak and go, oh, if I do make it this way, that joke snaps, right? And that, that's what part of comedians trying to just get away with attitude. They're not mm -hmm. learning the rules first before they break them. Right. They right. just see like, Bill Burr's just up there talking. Mm -hmm. I was like, no, he's worked over half his life at this art form, mm -hmm. you know. And he says, the first five to seven years of my career, I did one and two liners because I had to know oh, how to write a joke. Yeah, yeah. and that, yeah. that's what I did too. When you know how to write a joke, when you're on, on the move, when you're in the flow, mm -hmm. it's easier to see the opportunities or recognize the opportunities and the mechanics and the structure to be able to spin something and go, oh, I just put two ideas together. I'm gonna now list real quick and put it up. Oh, there's the... Yeah. Here's the line, you know, when he does like, go, he was like, everybody wants to bang a hot chick, you know, but uh, you know, the, the guy working at home, Home Depot can't because he's not a celebrity. Besides, chicks don't dig lumber, right? That's what he says. That's his joke. And it's like, all he did was take something from Home Depot. Yep. Every time I see the name, I, if somebody says Home Depot, I see a pallet of two by fours. And he says lumber and boom, that triggers that image and it makes us laugh. What a coincidence. What were the 13? 13, if we go into 13, we have double entendre, okay. we have uh, incongruity, we have uh, uh, paired phrases, we have simple truth, we have recognition observation. Mm -hmm. So observation takes the recognition laughter trigger and you just basically, basically observe the world and basically explain what it is, like okay. somebody waiting for a bus. They stand on a curb that's seven inches high, waiting for a bus that's 16 feet tall. And they sit there looking for the bus. They don't see the bus, so they step off the curb, losing, losing seven inches. Then they raise up two inches, losing a total of five inches to see a bus that's 16 feet tall. If you can't see it from up there, you can't, you're not going to see it from down there. Mm -hmm. And all you're doing is taking an observation and stepping it out for the audience. So that's ob And you know, comedians should have a goal of every week, write down five new observations in the minutia of what's happening in life. Good, and so good. it's just, you set yourself goals. So you're always walking around with comedic glasses. Mm -hmm. Then you have, um, then you have, uh, so paired phrases, comedic irony, paradox, um, ambivalence. Uh, you don't have my list in front of me and I just got lost. Oh, you're and, fine. Uh, but it's like, there's, so there's 13 that you can use Simple truth, very simple. It's like double entendre, but it's a phrase that has uh, an intended meaning. You find it a lot in songs. We speak in metaphors and euphemisms. And all you're doing as a comedian, it's all in having your cynicism, proving it wrong. I'm gonna show you that's wrong. So somebody says, uh, like a song, you go to Disneyland, you hear it's a small world. Have you listened to the lyrics? It's a world of joy, it's a world of tears, it's a world of hope, it's a world of fears. Isn't this a song about being bipolar? Hmm. And all, the audience goes, oh my God, I never thought about it that way, it's so true. Because you're taking that simple truth and you're flipping it. Scripture right. has a lot of symbolism. If you take that and now go to the liter literary simple truth meaning, you can get a joke. Its essence and its foundation goes back to call me a cab. You're a cab. Mm -hmm. Right? So call me a doctor. Is there a doctor? And I, you know, call me a doctor. You're a doctor. It's that same raw form, but now expanded out to other things that cool. we see all the time, you know? So uh, that's a, uh, oh, you'll notice that John Stewart, people say you want to take your comedy to the next level, start to recognize comedic irony, and um, also a paradox. That makes your brain actually do a dance. 
Paradox is two things that could be true, but not true at the exact same time. For example, when Carlin used to say, on TV, you could say you pricked your finger, but you can't say you fingered your prick. It's prick and prick. Two mm -hmm. different meanings of prick, they can be true for each of their meanings, and these, but they can't be true at the exact same time. And oh my God, you use them so close together. You know, one, they're the same word, but so different. So the brain does a little, oh wow, that's interesting, you know. Uh, so that's paradox. So there's lots of, so many different ways. Ambivalence. You can build an ambivalent situation and make sure you have two descriptors in the, in the, in the, uh, in the sentence. This is where specifics are important. And comedians sometimes try to be too economical and they remove a potential for a joke. Mm -hmm. So for example, if I say my dad was just diagnosed with stage four colon cancer, not a lot of opportunity there. Well, fuck my dad. You know, uh, I can add that attitude and maybe hope for a laugh, right? But what if I added more of a descriptor? My dad, who lives in Bakersfield, was just, let's say, my dad, who lives in East St. Louis, mm -hmm. just, got, <laughs> just got diagnosed with stage four colon cancer. Horrible, right? He lives in East St. Louis. Yeah. So we have, we're supposed to be tra traumatized over the colon cancer. But oh my God, he lives in East St. Louis. Mm -hmm. You know, Esther, my son, who my son in Jersey just came out of the closet. Oh, oh, that's weird. You have a son who lives in Jersey, mm -hmm. right? So it's like t using ambivalence quotient. Supposed to be upset about this, but instead I'm upset. I'm upset about that. Gotcha. So that extra descriptor helps you get there. Mm -hmm. You know, that's another technique you can use. Hot breath.